Hey, what's going on guys? Amir Fazeli here from Madonna's Athletics. In today's episode, we're going to do another workout with the coach. And today's episode, I wanna um, sort of bring out and uh, bring to light a little bit more about the importance of recovery and understanding and listening to your body. So I think recovery is something that a lot of people take maybe a little bit too lightly. People know that they gotta recover, but they don't know how important that really is and how much they gotta recover. Look, to a certain degree, you don't want to be completely recovered all the time because it's important for you to push your body a little bit into that uncomfortable zone for a little bit of time and hang out there before you back off. You need to see how your body is trending in regards to recovery or under recovery. And you can, you can uh, gauge that trend through quantitative measures. So. Uh, you know, in the past we've had things like HRV, which for some people, they don't believe it's, a, it's as accurate uh, for things, for sports like powerlifting. Uh, but there are also uh, qu other uh, qualitative measures, right, which you can, you can essentially use to quantify. What I mean by that is uh, certain questions and things like that you can ask yourself or your athletes to see how they're feeling at that time and be able to give a score of some sort. And then you see how that score is trending. And essentially, you want it to be, you know, trending upwards slowly. You want them uh, trending upwards, meaning you want their fatigue to be trending upwards. You want them to be getting more and more fatigued as time goes. But then there's gotta be sort of like a cutoff where you're like, okay, that's too much. Or the, the signs that are coming about are a little too extreme. We need to back off and then watch that trend go back down again, right? to a sweet spot and then you can continue again. So essentially like a deload. So that's exactly the type of thing that I've sort of been going through myself. I started training since the start of January. I got back into proper serious training again. And uh, since then, you know, I've been ramping it up. Volume has been coming up and I admittedly uh, ramped up volume uh, fairly quickly, fairly aggressively, mostly because I know a little bit about my body. I know what I can and can't handle and um, how far I can or can't push it. During the last week or so, uh, body was feeling a little bit more fatigued. A little bit. I, I was also going through a period, uh, a lot of work and a, a slightly more stress in general, just uh, throughout the day. So I was feeling my body was starting to was starting to feel it, right? Starting to cop it a little bit. It was starting to get hammered a little bit, and it wasn't recovering like it was uh, it normally would. So. Uh, I backed off last week, and so today I'm going to use today as a litmus test and compare it to last week. So uh, last week, today, I did deadlifts, and my top set was 255 uh, for triple and then followed by some back down sets. It, I was so fatigued, my body was so overworked that uh, normally when I, when I uh, do my deadlift, I can do all my back down sets. So the week previous to that, I managed to do all my back down sets, and I sort of just managed to get through it, right? I think I had to drop the weight a little bit. Last week though, I only managed to get two of my four back offsets, okay? The body just had nothing left. So uh, I've been using the, uh, the quantitative measures. I, I sort of put together this uh, little test uh, with a few simple questions, with the aim being to keep it simple as possible and quick as possible to be able to score myself and also our athletes, if this works out well, uh, in regards to recovery points, right? How recovered or under-recovered you are, to be able to determine that and then use that information to basically let yourself know what you're supposed to do that day in training. Whether you should back off, how much should you back off? Only in sets, but, or, or also in sets and intensity? Or should you just continue as you are? Or should you do no training at all? So. My, uh, today's, uh, today's result uh, for that um, point, for those recovery points, has been trending up. So, for example, the last few days, I was sitting at about a 12, 12 points, and today I'm about 16 points, so I'm recovering. Uh, and today I've got deadlifts, and I'm going, to, I'm going to compare the result today to last week, and I'm even going to go up in weight by another five kilos. Uh, this is based on what the test results is telling me. So I'm not going to edit it. I'm just going to leave it exact, exactly as it is. I'm going to show it to you guys as I do it. So let's get into it. All right, all the warm ups are done. Time for the top set. 260, aim is for a triple. And then we've got some back down sets. Let's see how we go.
All right, that's the end of the deadlift session. So, as you guys saw, the, the speed of the movement, way different to what it was last week, even though it's five kilos heavier. Uh, I felt much better in regards to the, the movement itself, the technicality, and how hard it felt for me. And uh, I felt like there was more left in the tank. Now, normally it would be five sets, but the, although my recovery points are trending upwards, which is a good thing, it's showing that I'm recovering, it's still just below that point where uh, the points allow me to do my normal sets and reps as per what the day requires. So obviously my body is still a little bit in the negatives and I do feel it. I don't feel completely fresh, but I do feel much better than last week. And uh, so that's just a way, an example to show you guys how you can use and you must use if you're looking for optimal results in the long term, how you must try and quantify how you feel and be able to use that as a, as a very powerful tool to be able to improve your training and be able to um, prevent yourself from healing, hitting plateaus and things like that. The general normal mindset for people is to just sort of go hard or go home. This sort of general consensus that there's no such thing as overtraining, just under eating, which is completely crap. Uh, overtraining absolutely exists and it, it's a real thing and you need to make sure that you understand it and, and also you, you understand how your body feels and how you can respond to it. Yes, it is very easy to get soft and sort of, you know, every little bit of a niggle or a little bit of a, you know, a bad night's sleep, you can think that that's, that's a call for you to deload. Absolutely not. Sometimes it calls for you to push ahead. But you definitely need to have an understanding of how your body feels and look for trends as they're coming and be able to adjust for that. Just make sure that you are, you are training smart and not just hard. You should train hard, absolutely, but make sure you're also training smart because if you ever feel yourself like how I did in the last week or so, where you feel like a certain weight that usually felt pretty good normally is all of a sudden becoming more and more grindy and you can't figure out why, that's because overtraining or overreaching, overreaching creeps up on you slowly and you, and you don't see it coming. Because it happens so gradually and slowly, you feel normal, but it just masks the amount of the, your, your normal capability, your normal ability. And you don't notice it until you actually take measures in recovering your ability and sort of going back again, right? Uh, like I said, it's a little bit of a fine balancing act. You want to make sure you're not too recovered all the time, nor too bashed all the time. You want to be keeping an eye on what your body is doing and how it's recovering. Anyway guys, hope that helps out. Stick around, more videos coming. If you like the video, please like the video. Please like and share and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos coming out. This is Amir Fazeli from Madonna's Athletics. Stick around.